Poppin' Tea Squad. It's your girl Keisha, and I am here with my all tea, all Shay, loving hip hop, New York uh, reunion part one. It aired last night. Um, so you know we always do our best and worst list. So for me, best makeup goes to Sin, Remy Ma, and Alexis Sky. I loved seeing the Alexis face because they gave you a pretty like laid back neutral face with a little pop of smokiness with the eye and a nude lip. Remy gave you a full drag queen beat bitch. It looked really good from far away, but up close. I felt as if her highlight underneath was a little bit too bright. They did they needed to dust some of the uh banana powder off. But other than that, I love their makeup. Worst makeup for me goes to Sydney Star and Nia Lee. Sydney Star, you know, she don't know what the fuck she doing. And Nia Lee, it was just pretty much basic. It didn't look like she had like anybody that really knew how to do makeup, it was like a beginner that did her makeup, so I really wasn't feeling it. Best hair for me goes to Alexis Sky when she turned around and you got to see that long, pretty, uh, natural, crinkly ponytail that reached past her ass. It was everything. Um, and then um, worst hair goes to Nia Lee. It was just, it just gave me mom, soccer mom with that headband or whatever the fuck she had on with them curls. The wig wasn't horrible. It just wasn't reunion worthy. It was just like, ugh. It was like Oprah on a bad day. And then Sydney Starr, once again, she don't know what the fuck she doing. That wig was a mess. The color combinations, the two-tone, it was just, no. It was very transgender 101. <laughs> Best dressed um, man for me goes to Mano. On stage, it really wasn't giving you much, but when I saw a full body pic of him, it was actually very nice. A nice fitted black suit, turtleneck, very James Bond. I really liked it. And then I like Jonathan's look because I love the color pink, Color Me Pink channel. And I love that he did that pale blush pink sequin suit bitch i want that motherfucker for my birthday that suit was everything bitch um and it just looked great under the lights it was just beautiful worst dressed man goes to jewels it was like where are you going this is not the hip-hop summit this is not uh yo mtv raps nigga this is a reunion he came up there with a sweatshirt on some change and some goddamn uh plaid pants and some fucking air force ones like nigga do better um, and then best dressed woman goes to Juju. I love Juju's outfit. I love the dress. I love the color. I love the embellishments on it. I did not like her hair though. The hair gave it, it was a little bit too, um, uh, Miss USA, America's, um, uh, Miss America or whatever with the hair. It gave me too much of a pageantry with the hair. If she would have had more of an edgy or a sleek ponytail, it would have edged it up some more. But I love the dress and the whole complete look. It was really nice. Um, and then also I really love Sin's look. It was just very understated, sophisticated, sexy. It was what it needed to be and it wasn't doing too much. If you didn't get to see, I have some photos of some of the cast members. Uh, where is it at? So here is Sin's look. She had on a black fitted bodycon dress with a sequin collar. Um, Mariah. Oh, then worst dress. I didn't even say worst dress. Oh, let me go back to my worst dress. Worst dress girl goes to Sydney Star. She looked like a prostitute off of Hollywood Boulevard. I don't know where the fuck she was going with that. Um dress she had on them fish tech fishnet tights the seek the 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 uh the the diamond encrusted booties the her it was just a mess mariah lynn looked like barbie going to her king singera that dress was horrible i don't know who the fuck made that shit but it was horrible she was too short for it that bottom cut her off she looked like a teapot it was too much dress for her little bitty ass body it was just ugly i didn't like the the embroidery it was just ugly then kim bella bitch you are not beyonce you are not love on top bitch sit the fuck down somewhere trying to have a beyonce moment at the mtv movie awards fucking six seven years ago and then on top of that she didn't even have on a full suit if you paid attention and go back and look she had on a button up a 
a white blazer and then her pants were um a faux leather legging. She didn't even have on fucking pants. Those were leggings and they were faux leather and they looked cheap as hell. Did not like it, bitch. Sorry. And then my other worst dress is Nia Lee. When you see her outfit from head to toe, it looked just the fabric just looked cheap. It didn't go together. It just it just was all over the place. But anyway, here is Mariah Lynn's look. It was just horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Barbie going to the bodega. Um, here is Jewels and Kimbella, girl, trying to be J and B, looking more like Kimbella and Jewels. <laughs> here is uh Maggie Carey's look. Maggie Carey's look wasn't horrible. She was giving me coming to America vibes, and she even said it. Um, here is Jaque. Jaque was giving us the harness look that a lot of the uh, A list actors are wearing on the red carpets. Um, I like the jacket and the harness. I did not like the chain and the turtleneck. It just was too much. Um, here is Jonathan's sequin blush pink suit. It was everything. Gave me life. And here is Yandy in her dress. It was very tribal inspired. It was a look. It wasn't a look for me, but it was a look nonetheless. And here is Sydney Star. She just, oh God, just whatever. She looks like she should be on the episode of Star. Um, and then here's Alexis Sky. Her beat was everything. Hair was everything. Did not like the dress. She wore a Giovanni dress. If you watch Real Housewives of New York, then you know who Giovanni is. The dress was banging from the back, but not the front. And then here is Nia Lee. The makeup was a mess. The hair was a mess. It was just very pedestrian, very soccer mom-esque. So those are the fashions, the, the do's, the don'ts, the worst, the best. Talk down below. Let me know what who was your best hair, your best uh, makeup, best dress, all that good stuff. Let's talk down below. Now let's get into the reunion. So Yandy says that Infinity is still living with her. Um, Maggie talks about herself growing up in the foster care system and she cries because she knows what it feels like to be in that position. They talk about Mariah and Cambella's accusations that Yandy only took the little girl in her house for clout and for publicity and this, this, and that. Cambella says she didn't speak on her kids and she started crying. And I'm like, you did. You you don't consider it talking about her kids because you're not talking about her biological children. But she considers that girl her child. And she took her in her home as such. So you were talking about her. And at the end of the day, you were talking about her parenting. Because if you're saying that she is that shallow and that fuck up a person that she would take a little girl in her house for a publicity stunt or for a storyline or for clout, then you're saying that she basically ain't a shit mama anyway. That's what you're saying, sis. I don't understand how that's not connecting for you. Um, so she says she didn't know Yandy was upset until five days after the episode aired because she thought that they were cool after they went to Costa Rica. Yandy says that she was offended when Cambella said to her in Costa Rica that she hoped that she was taking Infinity in for the right reasons. I would have been offended too. Uh, Yandy says, kids are off limits, period. People get extra for TV. I've done it before. But one thing you won't do, it, uh, she said, but one thing I do the best at is being a motherfucking mother. And if you sit with another human being and say me bringing a human being in my house is fake, you're disrespecting my mothering to my fucking kids. Cabela says that that's not what, that's not what happened and she's not going to uh, say that she talked about a child. You did. Jewels then get involved and say, you know, she was just talking about, you know, and what she what she was talking about, it was wrong. It was wrong what she said, but she did not speak about infinity. And I'm like, nigga, shut up, teeth. So Yandy say, did y'all see what I saw to the audience? And the audience started clapping. Cabela say, now you're the victim. And Yandy say, no, I'm not the victim. You can stop saying that. The victim is a 16-year-old girl that has to sit there and possibly be bullied by people saying your mother don't really want you. She doing it for Instagram. When I come to your house at 3 o'clock in the morning for you, but did I put that on Instagram? No. When I open the door for you and your kids, was that on Instagram? And I was like, oh shit, bitch. Shit is getting real. Cabela knew it was getting real too, and she started acting dumb like, what are you talking about? What? What does that have to do with anything? You saw her eye. When people get to doing like this with their eyes and going back and forth, they trying to figure out like what they're going to say, what the lie they're going to come up with, but this person airing their shit out, she was getting nervous because she knew Yandy was about to start spilling her and uh, that nigga no teeth. 
fucking tea. So Yandy say, when I sat in the hospital with you for different things, was that on Instagram? And I was like, ooh, bitch. And notice when she brought up her Kim Bella having hospital stays, Jewel's got his ass up to cut the conversation short because he knew she was about to start spilling their goddamn tea. And I feel like uh, she probably was in the hospital for some domestic violence situations. Joelle stand up and say, yo, 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 y'all doing too much. You know, we need to snip this in the bud, you know, and if y'all not going to be friends, just, just leave it alone. Just leave it at that. <laughs> and Mariah Lynn says that she's sorry and that she talked to Infinity herself. And Yandy says she appreciated that because as soon as the episode aired, Mariah called to say sorry and that she was wrong and that she, um, and that since then she's called and checked on her and Infinity every other day. Kimbella sitting there looking stupid. And at this point, it, I just realized that Kimbella used Yandy for a storyline this season. She was going to turn on Yandy. It's kind of like what, if you watch Real Housewives of New York, going back to that, it's kind of like what Jill Zarin did to Bethany that season where she was going uh, to turn her back on Bethany and use her for a storyline and it backfired. The same thing with Kimbella. She used Yandy for a storyline to turn on her and it backfired and she made herself look like an idiot. And she better hope she get invited back next season because the bitch knows she needs to check. Um, Remy says that Yandy can yell and cuss and do all that all she wants to, but at the end of the day, she knows she was very happy when Cabela asked her to be in her wedding because she cried, and that you're only going to get this upset with somebody that you genuinely love about, that you really genuinely love. Um, and I can agree, but that don't mean just because I love you and we had a friendship don't mean that we have to move forward with a friendship because if you're going to turn on me for a reality show, bitch, then we never really had a friendship at all. Kimbella says that she takes back what she said and apologizes to Yandy again. Yandy doesn't want know whether they can be friends or not and is not willing to even say if she will be friends with her again. Kimbella and Jewel's um, their segment comes up and Jewel, they talk about, you know, him going to jail and this, this, and that. And he says, you know, why well, I, I, I got six uh six year old daughter and I got a seven year old son. And, you know, I got a 16-year-old son, and she pregnant, so I, I just want to make sure, you know, you know, that I'm here for my kids, but I can't be, you know, and it, it really fucked me up, because, you know, now I won't be able to be here for my unborn child, and it kind of, you know, made me look things twice about, you know, the situation was made about how we were going to move forward with having this baby, you know, I love my kids to death. You know, I love my kids to death. I got another, you know, two weeks before I got to, you know, move back, go, go, you know, turn myself in. You know, it, it's just a process. And I was like, nigga, shut up. Them teeth. Still can't believe she married that nigga them teeth. So it's Sydney Star segment. She tells us she still got her little shrimp dick. Remy tells her, you know, just to tone it down some. And Jonathan disagrees. He feels like telling her to tone it down just like a white people telling a black person to turn down their blackness. Um, I think that Sydney is who she is. She just needs to learn how to read the room, per se. I don't think that she needs to tone it down. She just needs to learn how to present herself in a better manner. You know what I'm saying? That's not toning down her personality. She just needs to, like I said, read the room, learn how to communicate with people and talk to people and not feel like people are judging her or attacking her. Uh, they talk about Mariah involving herself in Sydney's career. Mariah says that when Rich is ready, they're going to find out about him reversing his vasectomy because they want to have a baby. And everybody like, where the fuck did she come? He's sitting there like, I can't believe this bitch is telling all our motherfucking business. She says that she's in love with him and will want to be with him. And he and they ask him if he's in love with her. And she he says that she has no right to talk about his diabetes and his sicknesses because he's, he's sitting there like he caught off guard. She tells him to say how he feels and he tells her to shut the fuck up and let him speak Jonathan like hold up don't talk to her like that because he didn't even have to tell her to shut the fuck up like she wasn't being disrespectful that came out of nowhere he walk off stage she says they've been on and off for five years five or eight years and that she was pregnant by him and everybody like what Naya tells her to stop embarrassing herself because he's not even showing her the same love that she's showing him and then he making her look like a fool and Mariah get all offended. And I was like, girl, she giving you a bit of advice because you are sitting up here going hard for a nigga that ain't going hard for you in public. So Mariah walks off stage and goes to confront Rich. Rich, she says that he said it was okay for her to bring up their relationship, but then he sat up there and embarrassed her and let Naya embarrass her. And she's like, are you going to back me up for once? Like, are you going to do this? And she crying. And he just tells her, go upstairs <laughs> she go upstairs like a dummy 
And he comes back on stage and he says he loved Mariah, but was taken aback by what she said. And they move on to the next segment. Joe and Sin segment is next. Sin says she didn't tell her mom about being raped until the day before the episode aired and that she and Joe have hired a nanny. And then they begin to talk about the, the cash trip and they're going to bring Safari out and then that's when the episode went off. Seems like part two is going to be better than part one. I give part one of the reunion uh, a B minus. I like the Yandy segment of the show the most um let's talk down below once again let me know who was your best dress your worst hair worst make uh worst hair best hair best makeup worst makeup best dress man all that shit let's talk down below what were your favorite parts about the reunion um make sure to thumbs up this video like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button i love you guys and i'm not doing a love and hip-hop miami review because last night's episode was boring as fuck and there really wasn't anything to it no new information was brought out except for us finding out that Shay got fibroids fibroids and i really didn't give a fuck about that shit um, everything else was them regurgitating shit that we have already talked about 50 million times, especially this chaotic shit. If he talk about this goddamn police chase one more motherfucking time, I'm going to shoot somebody. Um, the season finale next week, like it's going to be a little bit better. So I'll, you know, do a review next week, but this week's episode was trash. Love you guys. Bye.